Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Food Master Series. I'm Amelia Carbine, I'm your host uh, and uh, co-owner of, of Cake Foo. Um, it's a wonderful website, wonderful thing, and we're, we're glad you guys are all a part of it. And uh, we have a really awesome guest with us today. Uh, her, her name doesn't really need to be said because I think everybody knows who Marina is, but we have Marina Sousa here with us. And she's a very, I mean, extremely talented cake decorator. And we're just so happy to have you, Marina. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here finally. <laughs> yeah. And we've, we've tried a few times to get we you have. on. You're just a busy woman. <laughs> I'm difficult. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. You know what? I, I completely understand, especially, you know, the... The more celebrity status cake decorators, you guys oh, are Lord. you guys are busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, most of us just run businesses, just like the rest of you guys, and put the it, rest of the stuff in in between. That's time. true. <laughs> that's true. And you know, I have found that in the summertime, it's hard to get the cake food training scheduled because everybody's so swamped and busy. So they can be, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> Thanks. Likewise. Thanks. All right. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about you. Figure out, um, let everybody know who you are and and where you came from, how you got started, all of that stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, just go ahead and let us know. I, I guess start off with you know how you got into cake. Um. Gosh, I think like a lot of people in my generation of of cake designer. Um, I just kind of fell into it, you know. I'd say 10 plus years ago, nobody really thought of being a cake designer as a career, as an actual, you know, destination. Um, and I have two degrees in very different things, one from the Fashion Institute, the second from um, California Institute of the Arts and Theatrical Production and Management. Um, I was living in Los Angeles doing the whole entertainment industry thing, kind of like everybody else down there, and uh, had left a job that I was not in love with, and uh, literally was walking by a cake shop one day. Um, it happened to be Rosebud Cakes in Beverly Hills, and um, at the time, they were doing the kind of cakes that are totally commonplace, no big deal now. Um, but, you know, gosh, that's probably... 12, probably almost 14 years ago now. Um, and so it was a pretty extraordinary sight to see. And I didn't really have much um, baking or cake decorating experience prior to that. Um, I had taken a Wilton class when I was in the fifth grade with a neighbor. And um, that was kind of it. I could do a heck of a star tipped teddy bear cake. That was my big claim to fame <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Um, but there was just something about the whole cake thing that fascinated me. And so I was uh, down in Beverly Hills just having lunch with a friend and walked by Rosebud, went in, looked at their cakes, looked at their stuff, um, and kind of to make a very long story short, walked out with a job. Um, awesome. And at the time, they were just looking for somebody to kind of, uh, coordinate event logistics and work in the front, which, given my experience um, in the entertainment industry, one of the things I did a lot was event production. I figured I could do that with my eyes closed, and at that point I was kind of bored not working. So I kind of looked at it as an opportunity to um, just do something fun while I looked for a quote-unquote real job, at least I could <laughs> <for> my family. <laughs> Love it, that. it took about a year before I stopped prefacing my current employment situation as a uh, temporary, just, you know, doing it to kill time job. Um, and that was actually a pretty hard transition for me to go from kind of something more corporate and, uh, you know, at the time what I considered a more, you know, stand up reputable career, which I was educated for to going to just making cakes. Um, and again, this was back in the day pre-cake TV, pre, you know, pastry chefs being celebrities. Um, and so it was, it was an interesting transition. Um, but it was one that I loved. And I was very fortunate to end up at Rosebud um, just because they were so ahead of the game in regard to artistry. Um, Ellen Katz, the um, woman who owns it, really treated it more like an edible art studio. So I really had the opportunity to kind of learn my craft while 
working alongside some amazing artists and um, you know working with celebrity clientele and with event coordinators who were just kind of getting their start now um, at the time too Mindy Weiss, Colin Cowie, all those people that are like such big celebrities now are just you know event planners that we worked with all the time so awesome. um, that's kind of how I ended up in Cake. Cool. Well, and then, um, so your shop is? I now own uh, Just Cake, which is a custom cake shop in Capitola, California. Um, I was at Rosebud for, I think, about two and a half years before I decided I really wanted to open my own business. Um, but knowing how I kind of back-ended into the business, um, I didn't really have any solid baking experience. And the one thing I knew was that baking is much more of a science than cooking is. And um, I knew I needed some sort of a foundation. So I left LA to go to culinary school. I went to uh, Culinary Institute of America. And with every intention of returning to LA to start my business there, that after spending a year um, in the wine country, I just did the baking and pastry arts program um, at Greystone. Um, I found it virtually impossible to go back to LA. Um, oh. It took like one or two trips on the 405 and I was done. So um, just life did not have to be that hard. <laughs> um, so I came home for the summer and uh, one thing led to another and I ended up starting my business here. Well great, That's that sounds like a you know wonderful beginning, wonderful story. <laughs> it's nice yeah. to, you know, I, I about the slower paced life kind of a thing. I um, went and stayed with my mom for a few weeks uh, and uh, they live out on a farm. Uh -huh. and it was so fun to be able to just go and you know it seemed like everything just slowed down and life was just good you know. It's, yeah there's oh. certainly <laughs> something to be said for that. I was on the beach walking my dog the other day and I was just happy <laughs> being oh. where I am so, it's, so nice. it's nice to be able to do the two. I mean, I certainly love traveling and teaching, um, which, you know, that's been a whole nother um, road that this is taking me down, but I certainly love coming home, too. <laughs> yes, and you definitely do a lot of traveling and teaching. I, you and, and James seem to be the little duo. Yeah. <laughs> and we love yeah. James. <laughs> yes, we do love James. James is actually finishing up filming this morning um, his second Crossy class. So he's in Denver right now. Wrapping awesome. up, filming. <laughs> yeah, he's he's posted some pictures of, of the film. I know, which I'm is so excited. <laughs> they banned me from posting pictures when I was there, but he oh, seems really? to get away with a lot more than I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really love. I he showed a picture of just his setup, and he yeah. had a rolling pin and a rolling pin stand. I I just. <laughs> I love it. It's genius. I, it's well, that genius. rolling pin stand is all credit to Nicholas Lodge. We, oh, really? Uh, we saw in his room as he was setting up those cute little rolling pin stands, and I flipped out. And um, <laughs> leave it to Nick to not only find such a gadget that would hold a rolling pin, but find it in green, which is his yeah, signature, color. signature um, color. Thankfully, it works for James, too. So <laughs> yep. I'm glad he is uh, showing it off on Crossy. That's awesome. I, I love it. I want one. <laughs> yeah, well, they're available on Nicholas's website, and he'll have them at ISIS. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to go grab one. Yeah. Okay, so let's... um. Let's let everybody know really fast before we move into the um, the actual training part. I want you guys to know that we are going to be doing a giveaway. Um, Marina has a crafty class that is just released today. So uh, you want to tell us about your your crafty class? Sure. Um, it is called Designer Fondant Textures, and it kind of started off as. Um, you know, something that I, I, I really like technique-based classes as mm -hmm. opposed to project-based classes simply because I feel like it gives, um, you know, the student much more to take away and much more to kind of make your own. Um, and so the technique-based uh, content 
was originally, I think we started off with like eight different techniques and then they wanted to cut it down to six, which was fine. And then I said, um, <laughs> I was like, why don't we do each technique three different ways? Because that's one of the things that I love most is being able to offer my clients different ways in order to achieve the same kind of a look. And that's really just from the the vantage point of a business owner because I don't like to say no but sometimes people's budgets don't necessarily fit their expectations and so you know if you've got somebody who doesn't want to pay top dollar but wants sequins well having a few different ways to approach the same um, concept really gives you an opportunity to offer your clients more of a range so that was my thought process behind it um, and my producer thought it was great and so we went with it. We chose six different techniques that I was going to produce in three different ways. Um, it wasn't until I was actually packing and in Denver for the filming that I kind of did the math and realized that three times six equaled 18. <laughs> so that was a bit of a challenge. I, I will certainly say it was the uh, the toughest class I have filmed yet because we literally produced 18 different cakes, albeit small cakes, wow. there's still, you know, 18 separate little projects that needed to be finished. So um, the end result, I think, is, is pretty cool. Um, each lesson will take you through three different chapters and give you three different vantage points on um, the same technique. And the goal really is for you to just add these techniques to your cake design arsenal and be able to do with them what you will. Awesome. And these are um, some pictures that I'm throwing up here of oh. things that you've learned on the Craftsy class. Can right. You see, see so, those? yeah, that one is um, the one front and center is an example from the ruching uh, lesson and that is kind of an applied design and then you can kind of see in the back there's a um, like a Dresden I uh -huh. with my hands um, <laughs> a uh, kind of an embossed ruching kind of a concept there you've got fringe and um, sequins and that's a that one up close. Yeah, that's the I um, love that one. The kind that's of Dresden gorgeous. tool ruching. And then I went back in um, and hand painted. So in that class, there's the three, um, or I'm sorry, in that technique, there's um, the applied design, the ruching with the Dresden tool, and then you can also just hand paint. And that's kind of a combination of the two, uh, going back and hand painting accents into the embossed design. Awesome. And I have one more to show. There's this one. Oh, yeah. yeah gotta love the shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that one is um, the, seek, the second, I think, uh, technique in the sequins. And oh, sequins. That I love this. I've seen sequins done before, but not uh -huh. like this. This is so cool. Yeah, so that's just with gelatin um, mm -hmm. sheets, which I kind of played around with um, just because I liked the the luminescence of them. I mean, texture to me mm -hmm. is something that I've always loved, and um, trying to to figure out how to get texture sometimes out of a monochromatic color scheme mm -hmm. um, is kind of a challenge. And one of the the fun ways to do it is to kind of vary your mediums and. Um, you know, I think we're all still looking for the perfect jeweled medium. While isomalt somehow fits that bill, isomalt and cakes still are kind of an interesting marriage. Um, so, kind of started playing around with gelatin in that vein, and then decided that rather than jewels, uh, sequins was the way to go with that. Awesome. And there's a close up of that one. Again, I know I showed it already, but. Oh, yeah. So cool. I love that. And I love how it shines and it's, yeah. yeah and like the luminescence that you said. Different, you know, exactly. Very, just by gorgeous. adding different things to the gelatin itself, you can get different effects with the same medium. So that's awesome. one of my favorite lessons. Awesome. Okay, so this class is available right now. Um, we actually have a 25% discount for you guys. So um, if you 
uh, go and take advantage of that discount. It's only available today, so make sure that you guys go and, and take advantage of that discount from us. And I know everybody thinks oh. that they should wait until there's better discounts out there, and Craftsy has certainly developed a reputation for discounting things all the time. Um, as an instructor, I'm kind of happy to say they're rolling back that initiative. <laughs> so oh, yeah. their discounts are going to be fewer and farther between. Um, uh -huh. So grab them when you can. <laughs> well, that's a good heads up right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jump on and grab it, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, there's some exciting new things coming up at Craftsy, which I'm not at liberty to, at liberty oh. to discuss. But um, things are going to be changing. And as far as those discounts, I wouldn't wait as long as you think you can. <laughs> okay. Well, good to know. Thanks for the heads up. So, um, for those of you, there there is a Craftsy link available. I believe it. Um, it's. I think it's on the screen. If not, we'll put it up there. Um, I'm sure Bobby can put it in the chat box for you guys. So go check out that link. It's www.cakefood.com forward slash marina. <laughs> so that's our link. There you go. <laughs> and so you can jump on and get 20% uh, off. Uh, we will be doing a giveaway, and we will be giving away a, a free Craftsy class to a lucky winner today. So if you guys hang out to the end, you guys can uh, take advantage of um, the opportunity to maybe win the class, <laughs> which would be really fun. So, okay. Um, let's go ahead and we will open up our training portion for you. You get to see two me's for a minute. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's jump into our training, and I will let you, Marina, just take over and and explain everything to everybody, and go from there. Okay. So this is just complete. oh, really fast. Sorry. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, make sure you guys um, know where the chat screen, the chat box is. Make sure that you uh, ask your questions throughout the training. We we need to um, get them in as soon as you can because there is a little bit of a lag. I don't want to you know skip out on on questions. So make sure you get them asked. Marina's here, ready to answer. So okay, go ahead, Marina. Sorry. Okay, so the first. Um, was just simply, it said red and mocha. So basically, this is a totally simple, um, just quick little flower that uh, I like to make. Now, I, compared to my uh, buddy James, is uh, he's Mr. Botanically Correct Flower, and um, I'm kind of the exact opposite, um, although I think I have tempered him some. Uh, one of the flowers he's thrown into his crafty class is kind of fantasy-ish, so that oh. took a lot of hard work <laughs> to get him <laughs> to the point where he didn't shiver if something wasn't completely botanically correct. So <laughs> He that, is really good that way. <laughs> he is, he's very good that way, but sometimes, you know, a little luster dust isn't going to kill you. So, <laughs> um, let's see. So this is just a slide showing that I used uh, red and mocha colored uh, fondant, and I'm using uh, Fonderific is um, what what that is. And I've just rolled both out on my little KitchenAid um, mini sheeter, as I like to call it. And um, I, I, think like I rolled them out <laughs> to about a two. Um, and then just laid one on top of the other and rolled it through again. And then you achieve kind of a double sided um, font that way. Perfect. And that just kind of shows the, the two sides once they've been kind of blended together. Do you have to um, put anything, like any water or anything like that to get them to stick, or do they just run together? I don't. I mean, if you're in a really dry area and, um, say, you're using another brown of fondant that ha that's much drier than Fonderific is, you may want to just put just the slightest amount of moisture um, between the two, but in this particular case, I didn't. I just they were freshly rolled out, and I just put them together and um, ran it through again. So I, there was okay. no water in between those. Awesome. Um, one of the reasons why I, I like this particular little blossom um, is because it just takes a, a round cutter. So that is all that that is. Is just I think that one was about. Um, 
one and a half inches. So it's relatively small, but you can do this with any size round cutter. And you'll see that, you know, one of them is flipped over, and so one has the beige and the other side is red. I love that. I love the idea of making it double-sided. Yeah, I do that. I think I did that in my first craftsy class, the advanced mm -hmm. fondant techniques with some ribbons um, that were just rolled around a straw, little curly cue type things, and uh -huh. just always a nice little surprise. Um, and then this is just a quick um, demo of you know taking the initial round, putting it in your hand, folding it, not necessarily in half, but almost half, like three quarters of the way up there. Um, just so you have a little height variance, and then fold it in half again, and kind of pinch the the tip at the base, and that is what is going to form the individual petals. Awesome. I like I like the way that it. I, I just really love the way that that looks. The contrast of the red and the mocha, and the it looks almost like you know the scrapbooking paper type, you know, look. Yeah. But just very clean, very. You know, yeah, it's not a color scheme that I typically work with, but it was the first two tubs of fondant I grabbed yesterday, so I just went with it. <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, and then the biggest thing about it is just to take a pair of scissors and cut um, the base of the blossom off uh, at an angle. So you really want to start um, at the tip the point of it where the scissors are positioned and then just cut straight from there and um, that's going to kind of naturally cause the, the the petal to lay flat. Okay, cool. And you're going to want to do however many of these um, depending upon the size. Now this one like I said was relatively small. Um, what I did, uh, you'll see on the bottom, there's just a, a little piece of mocha fondant there. I just used the same sized cutter that I cut the rounds out and just have that flat on my table and use that as kind of a place to position um, the, the individual petals into a round shape for uh, a flower. And that you can add a touch of water or modeling chocolate or royal icing, whatever you feel comfortable yeah. with as far as attaching it to that Gum disc. Glue. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So we just have in the top corner the, the completed um, blossom. Um, in the top right-hand corner, I just have unmolded um, some button molds that I'm just uh, dusting with a little bit of super gold, I believe, luster dust, and just use one of them as the center for um, the blossom. Okay, so tell me about these button molds. Where did you get these? So those are a part of the line um, of molds that Dominic Palazzo has um, worked with me on. They are available um, right now on his website, Marvelous Molds. Um, and you just need to, to look for Marina's molds on his website. Um, and I actually have quite a big collection, I realized, when I was, awesome. um, when I got them in for cake camp, um, as we were kind of inventorying everything. There's um, a handful of button molds and some uh, brooch molds and new this year, which will be released at ISIS. Um, anybody that was at Cape Camp got kind of a little sneak preview of them. Um, there's a whole new line of brooch molds um, that are going to be available at ISIS next week. Very cool. So if you are looking for some unique and uh Lots of brooch molds. <laughs> yeah, there's brooches and buttons and then, of course, the beads, which is kind of mm -hmm. what got me started in the whole mold thing to begin with, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> awesome. And then you just dusted, these were the mocha color, and you just dusted them with? Those were just, I did those in white. Oh, um, you did them in white, okay. They were originally, yeah, just white fondant or gum paste, I believe. I forget which I pushed in the molds there. And then I just dry dusted them with uh, a super gold. Um, and then I think you'll see as we go on, I accented some of them just with a little bit of metallic Ooh, gold. Ooh, pretty. 
So the um, the swags are also part of the jeweled line that I have of molds. Those are one of my favorites. The does the it actually come in a swag shape? It does. Oh, cool! I it like does. that. The same mold has two different sizes. It's um, the mold that I used in the um, jeweled wedding cake class um, craftsy to accent around the bottom of the cake um, stand that I made there. But this was just simply white. I dusted it with a little bit of super gold and then went in with um, a metallic gold highlighter and just kind of accentuated. Now you'll see at the bottom, and the whole reason that I even put this, gave you this photo was um, kind of in the middle at the, the connection of the molds there, I took some of the, the little individual petals that we made and um, just kind of tripled them up and have those just as a little flourish um, between the swags. So that's just another option instead of just making a, a, a petal out of them or a flower um, to use them as little accents here and there too. It's kind of festive. That's so clever. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this little, um, the little red thing in the bottom right, is yeah, that so with that the same? You'll see when we go on to the next, the pinwheel. Oh, the okay. Is coming up. I use oh, the same here's pattern. The, these okay. are what the molds look like. Yes. So the ones in the back um, are the button molds and just the, the one that looks kind of jeweled tucked in there. That's one of the brooch molds. Awesome. I love they they look really high quality, really great. They really are. I mean you can even see in, you know, this not so great photo of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> how shiny they are on the inside mm -hmm. and that is really the key to any good mold so just I mean I buy molds all the time I think I came home with a handful of, of different ones from Kate Camp as well um, mm -hmm. and so one of the things to look for when you're buying a silicone mold is you don't want to buy anything that's kind of tacky or not wet feeling but just kind of sticky that's mm -hmm. a mold that just hasn't been cured properly and you're never going to get a really great glossy impression out of it and it's going to be the first thing to kind of dry out and tear um, you want something that the interior of the mold really has a high gloss that's what's going to make it a great mold to use with both chocolate and isomalt and um, fondant and gum paste. Now with fondant and gum paste the gloss doesn't necessarily mean a lot but with isomalt and chocolate it certainly does. Um, you're never going to get a perfect chocolate shine out of a mold that is dull. Just kind of one of those things. Okay, that's good. Good to know. All right. Oh, and this is the Fonderific, that that's what you use? Yes. The red, the mocha, and the gum paste with the little brooches. Yes. And you and, and James are pretty big into the, the Fonderific scene, so... Yeah, you know, it's. I don't really believe that there's one of anything to use. I mean, I've used other brands and continue to use other brands here and there, um, but Fonderific, just for me, is so easy to use and as an instructor I love it because it's kind of an easy win for students who've mm -hmm. never worked with fondant before. Um, it doesn't dry out. That's like the biggest thing ever. I mean how many of us nice. play beat the clock when you're rolling out <laughs> fondant and it's kind of a race to get it on and um, make sure your edges aren't torn or you have elephant skin and that kind of a thing and you can literally roll out you know enough to cover a 14 inch round and walk away and go to lunch and come back and just kind of warm it up with your hands for two seconds and cover a cake and you're good to go. Awesome. So, yeah. Fonderific cool. is great. I really do. Yeah. And I it just Fonderific. tastes really yummy too. The mocha, especially. I think that's probably one of the reasons why I grabbed that one yesterday. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is um, uh, another just quick little. Simple, simple project. Um, the did you? I don't know if you showed the cutters first. If I was not looking at the screen, um, I did. I didn't. But, okay. Not. Either way, they're um, probably in there. I made. I maybe I messed up in the order. Uh, no, no worries. <laughs> So that particular cutter um, is uh, one that New York Cake um, has made for me. I think they've done like four, uh, four or five, um, and it's kind of it's just a convex square where the squares are are kind of rounded off um, in the center. So that is what that is, and I just cut a, a 
square out of the mocha fondant. Okay. All right. So the little concave square, these are really nice shapes. Yeah. So that is just showing the shape with um, my little mini chef knife there that I just went in at the corners and cut um, not quite halfway through, but maybe about an inch um, at an angle on each corner. I love that little mini chef knife. I know. I, I got more that. questions about my knives, I think, during my first craftsy class than anything else. <laughs> All right, so I'm Sir sure that's what I Okay, Sir Latob. <laughs> Sir Latob, the brand is Kuhn Rikon, I believe it is. And if you just Google it, K-U-H-N-R-I-K-O-N, they've got all sorts of uh, patterns and prints, and they even have damask knives and um, oh. some fun stuff. Fancy. <laughs> I yeah. love it. <laughs> and they're not that expensive. So that's I, love, why I, I love the cute tools. They're, yeah. they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this picture is just simply showing, um, you know, basic pinwheel type action where you take one corner um, of each section and fold it down into the center. And so that's all that's going on there. Mm -hmm. um, I've done some of them with a the two-toned fondant. You can, I love doing these with like one side maybe even textured or stenciled um, just so you kind of get that variation. Cool. I could see this done with an icing sheet too. Yeah, you know, definitely. The, the ones that have the actual, you know, designs on them. That would be yep. really cool. Yep, those are great. And again, I just took a simple button um, and put it in the middle. Awesome. Very so nice. So that red one, um, and here's just some completed ones where again I. Mm -hmm went in with a little bit of gold dust and, and kind of accentuated. You'll see the red and the, um, the beige at the bottom of the screen. And the one that you had asked me back a few frames back, that was simply the same convex um, square cutter that um, I took instead of making cuts, I just took the points and pulled them towards the center. I think it's the other direction. Oh, okay. Oh, it that was more one. with yes. the... Um, this one right here. Yeah. That one there. So the one really small in the back, I'm sorry I didn't get a better picture of that one, that's the two-toned using the convex cutter and just taking the points and bringing them in the center. And you get kind of a, a cool um, dimensional square kind of a shape. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that's a really nice little accent piece that you can just throw in somewhere that needs something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm all about the... <laughs> yeah, the little embellishments, right? Yes, the embellishments. <laughs> yes, I, I have noticed that, you know, that's kind of just your style, you know, just you, you add things in here and there and it just makes the whole cake just like spectacular, so... I guess so. It's so funny. Everybody always asks me to like explain my style or describe my style, and I don't really have a word for it. I don't. I mean, I think there's some designers that you can just look at a cake and mm -hmm. know, you know, that's yeah. them. And you know, there's some designers who kind of only do one thing, and so it's easy to recognize. But um, I, I don't know. I, I I don't have the words for myself. <laughs> I just you know, do what I, I do. feel I feel that way too. There are so many times I. I've been asked to go and teach places, and I have such a hard time coming up with things to teach because, you know, everybody has their one thing, you know, right. their one main thing that they always teach, and that they're really good at. And I just think, I have a lot of things. What's my one thing? I mean, yeah, I know what no, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I never, I always have a hard time with that too. <laughs> I, so yeah, we get each other. You're in good company. <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's, it's good to be well-rounded that way, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely agree, and I think that's why I focus more so on techniques. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think sometimes that gets me in trouble when selling classes, like at an event such as Cake Camp, which we just finished up, and I still can't believe I never saw you the whole three days. No, I know. <laughs> I know. <was, laughs> Tucked away in my classroom the entire time. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's people like, you know, Mike McCary, who all of his classes were structure in different projects. And, you know, it was very clear what you were, you know, going to learn. Um, and I think that's great. I just am, am not that easy, I guess. <laughs> I like throwing out more techniques and letting people do with 
what they like. What they like, yeah. Well, you know, and that's a good thing, I think, because you're not teaching one thing and saying, here, make a cake that looks just like this. Right. You're teaching them, you know, look at all the things you can do with this. Go and do what you want. Right. You know? So I think that's, I think it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, it works for some people and not so much for others, but it's all good. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I guess there are some that need specific... Yeah, or people just want to be able to, like, replicate something exactly, yeah, uh -huh. which is a, you know, a good skill to have as well. So that's why there's 31 flavors of ice cream. That's right. <laughs> oh, and here are the cutters, right here. Yeah, so there's the convex squares. I have a quadrifoil cutter, um, a set that looks somewhat like that. They're just rectangles um, that are convex, and then diamonds that are convex. And supposedly at Isis, although I still have yet to see them, um, they'll have two new ones out for me as well. Cool. That'll be fun. So if you guys are going to ISIS, make sure you stop by the NY Cake. Is that? Yeah. So I'm going to be kind of splitting my time between New York Cake um, and Baking's booth and um, make your own molds. Um, I just got an email actually this morning from them saying that they wanted to know time so they could uh, put some sort of a schedule out when um, Elisa Strauss is actually coming as well this year, and she'll mm -hmm. be in the Make Your Own Moods Molds booth. So um, there will be a schedule of when we'll be in the booth as well. Awesome. All right. Well, now you know where to find Marina during yes. access. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, um, we will move on to the question and answer portion in just a second. I wanted to share with you guys. Marina oh. shared a recipe with us. So, yay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Flavor-wise, I'm all about simple for the most part. Um, you know, everybody always asks me what my favorite cake is, and I just like white cake with nothing mm -hmm. on it. It's like my favorite part of the cake is the part that you cut off the top. <laughs> to, I love the top. To level it out. And so, mm -hmm. you know, just plain vanilla or lemon are usually um, the, the parts of the cake that I will indulge in. And not that I don't like more complex cookies, um, this one is just one of my favorites, and it's funny, I, I sent these out once as Valentine's Day cards. I did this whole elaborate thing where I made heart cookies and boxed them up and sent them out, and uh, Elisa Strauss <laughs> called me, and she was like, is that a recipe that you'll share, or is it proprietary? <laughs> I love it. So it's become her favorite. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, you know... Well. I used to, when I was young, I thought that, you know, I, that shortbread cookies and, you know, I thought the plain was boring. I thought yeah. it was, you know, who wants that? I want I want the chocolate. I want right. the, you know, the caramel. The, and I still like all that stuff, but I've really come to appreciate just a good, basic, yep. you know, recipe. I, I think there's something about, a you know, just a real simple basic that just is so refreshing. I love it. Yeah, no agreed. And that's it's funny, James and I always get um, teased for investigating every cupcake <laughs> place in the universe when we are traveling, which we've kind of we've we've kind of switched from that to macaroons recently. But in right. either case, <laughs> um, you know, vanilla is usually what we judge a place on. You know, just making a uh -huh. good vanilla anything is hard. Um, mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it's not that it's a non-flavor, it's just that it's vanilla. It's it's a very true, simple flavor, and so um, that's kind of my thought with these cookies as well. Simple is better. Awesome. I like that. <laughs> and it's really fun to always, you know, be hearing about your little adventures. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have had some fun ones throughout the, <laughs> throughout the years. We certainly have, definitely. <laughs> that's awesome. I think everybody wants to come and hang out with you guys. <laughs> you guys are fun. <laughs> well, some days you can have them, let me tell you. <laughs> he always says that he's the little brother that I never knew I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yep. Oh, God, I hate that picture. That was the oh. last day of shooting, I think, the second class. And, boy, they had a different makeup artist every day. And that woman did some... Smoky eye, something or other that, but uh, just a little. You didn't love. <laughs> oh, well, okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you look beautiful. <laughs> I think. 
thanks. <laughs> Okay, so um, we have our question and answer portion. If you guys haven't asked your questions to Marina, go ahead and, and put them in now. Um, we will give you a little bit of time to get those questions in. Uh, we do have a couple in so far that we'll talk or that we'll go over. And uh, uh, like I said in the beginning, there is a little bit of a lag be, um, through the Hangout uh, program. So um, hopefully we will get to your questions before, um, before we uh, run out of time or have to move on. So uh, OK. Um, someone wanted to go over the colors again that you used, the, the color of fondant that you used. Um, the colors were just red and mm -hmm. the mocha flavor. The mocha is a kind of that beige color that you see um, and it does have a mocha flavor to it. Oh, so okay. it's that combination. All right, and, and you can you can buy the Fonderific fondant in those exact colors, in those flavors and everything? Is that... Yes, definitely. Okay. And they have them in, I think, eight, most of the flavor, or most of the colors they have available in an eight ounce just a kind of starter pack, um, and then two pounds and five pounds and ten pounds. So awesome. the flavors all come in the two pounds, and there's mocha, um, now they have peppermint and almonds and a cinnamon bun, um, some interesting flavors. In addition cinnamon to bun sounds, I, I've actually tasted that cinnamon bun. It is really it's good. <laughs> I like kind it. Kind of unexpected, <laughs> but it's awesome with like a carrot cake or... <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Some, you know, those fall warm flavors. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, let's see. Someone asks, uh, does it matter the thickness of the two colors when you combine them? Um, like I said, I think I rolled them both to a number two, um, which is about an eighth of an inch or less, and then I rolled them uh, together through at first a number three and then a number two. So it's just a, when, if you're using a pasta roller, then it's just kind of a gradual progression. Um, but really the ultimate thickness is determined by what you're doing with it. If you're um, you know, doing like ribbon loops and curls and that kind of a thing, you're probably going to want it a little bit thicker than um, what I did for the petals, but it's um, ultimately determined by the project. Okay, and probably a smaller project needs to be thinner than a bigger exactly. project and, and that yeah. kind of thing. Okay, so just to, to whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, someone said that, uh, you okay? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm just grabbing <laughs> I don't know what can people see me now. <laughs> yeah. You're fine, you're totally okay. fine. <laughs> Um, okay, someone said uh, satin ice is gluten-free, dairy-free. Is Fonderific because Wilton is not? Um, Fonderific is definitely gluten-free, um, and I believe it's dairy-free. Double-check me on that, but I know it's kosher par, I want to say. There, we, I just got back from the fancy food show, and there was big discussions about it with mm -hmm. uh, people, but I believe it's gluten and dairy-free. Double-check their label, but um, I know it's not, it's not, um, it's only one part of the kosher certification, which I'm sorry, I'm not kosher savvy. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, so um, it says, uh, when using Fonderific for embellishments, do you add tie loves to help it set? Um, you certainly can. That is one of the things about Fonderific is that it's never going to dry hard. Um, it will dry firm but not out. So sometimes I'll just mix a little bit of gum paste with it if I want it to dry harder, but you can certainly add a little bit of Tylos um, if you just want to use those particular colors as is. Okay, great. One of the things though I like about being able to do embellishments out of Fonderific and, and usually the reason I'll choose that over something else depending upon the project is that because of the fact that it will stay flexible over a long period of time, you can really make embellishments earlier in the week, like just planning your production schedule because, you know, say those um, the like the jeweled swags. Now, if those were out of 
uh, any other brand fondant or out of gum paste, they're going to dry completely hard and flat. So when you go to put them around the sides of a cake, they're not going to conform to the round. Whereas if they were out of Fondorific, and even if you made them the week before, when you go to put them on the cake, you're still going to be able to get them to conform to the sides of the cake. So, nice. um, you know, I do that with lace and with, with other kind of molds or just even basic cutouts. It really helps production action wise because you can do it earlier in the week when there's not so much going on and apply them quickly after your cake is baked and covered. Awesome. Um, that that does. Uh, we have a follow up question on that. Um, sure. Someone asked, um, how far in advance do you make your fondant decorations? Um, it really depends upon uh, how prepared I am, which usually is <laughs> not quite as prepared as I should be. Um, but ideally, um, you know, earlier in the week. Um, or even sometimes, you know, weeks in advance. Anything that's kind of complex, um, I will make sure is on our schedule, um, you know, as soon as it can be. And so Dawn Nimick, who um, some of you may remember from Challenge and Last Cake Standing, who is my amazing um, right hand, she usually does a lot of the intricate detail stuff, and I, you know, give her as much notice um, as I can, sometimes not as much notice as she would like, <laughs> um, but whenever we take an order that has anything that screams Dawn, I try to give her a heads up so that she can kind of plan her schedule, and oftentimes she'll make things weeks in advance. Perfect. Okay, um, someone said, isn't a three thinner than a two on the KitchenAid rollers? I, I know that every brand is different. With, it, it, it either is. goes one way or the other. I, I might have mixed up them when I was, when I was speaking, but yes, um, it goes, with KitchenAid, the, the one is the thickest, and then oh, okay. you go two is thinner, three is thinner, and then I think it, KitchenAid goes down to an eight or a nine, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay. Good to know. All right, someone says, sometimes I get frustrated because I feel like you have to have all the toys to make a great looking cake. What do you recommend for someone starting out in cake decorating who also can't afford to buy all the tools? You know, I totally agree and, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I like this simple little flower because really all you need is round cutters. Um, as far as the centers, yes, you can certainly use molds, but you can also, you know, just roll a piece of uh, fondant or gum paste into a ball and with a simple gum paste tool kind of make impressions um, in it that look very similar to some sort of a button pattern or take a, you know, stack of pearls and apply those in the center. Um, you know, I'm all for using what you have and a lot of times using tools that aren't necessarily meant for cake decorating, which are oftentimes a lot less expensive, mm -hmm. um, to use as embellishments. I mean, any kind of rubber stamps um, gives great texture and craft stores are, are full of those. Um, and it, a lot of times you don't even need the cutters. I mean, I think the tools and the, the toys, as people like to refer to them, it's just things to save you time and make things a little bit easier, but I yeah. certainly understand when you're first starting out not wanting to make that investment. So, for example, the convex, you know, square, that's something that, you can easily hand cut with an exacto knife. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing shapes that I don't have cutters or, or molds for, I will just go on Google Images and you know type something in that I'm looking for and print it out and just use that as a template and cut mm -hmm. around it. So um, you know, while I I love molds and they make production things a little bit easier, there is certainly a satisfaction in, in kind of creating your own. And as far as brooches and that kind of a thing, just layering different cutouts and textures really kind of will give you the same result. Yeah. Good. Okay. You know, I, I I honestly when I started out, I was the same. You know, I very my husband was going to school full time full time, 
with a part-time job. We were just barely, you know, I had a bunch of kids. It was hard yeah. to, to really get started. And I know that a lot of people are in that same position. And so, you know, th what I did was anytime I got a cake order, I would, you know, design that cake. Whatever I needed for that cake, you know, I would make sure that I purchased at least one something that yeah. I needed for that cake. And, and the, the money that I got from that cake, you know, went to purchasing that thing. You know, and, you know, you, you, you need to keep some money so that you can pay your bills. Right. But, you know, set aside some of that money to, you know, to build up your, your products and things like that. So, yeah, and quite honestly, I mean, I'm the perfect example of somebody who has, like, drawers and drawers of stencils and stamps and rolling pens and I can't even tell you what else um, and it's not that I don't love them all but at the end of the day I kind of go back for the same things I yeah. always reach for mm -hmm. the same tools so I would just say purchase you know only things that you really really love and I think Amelia's suggestion of you know purchasing something when you have an order which means you have an immediate need for it makes a lot of sense yeah. um, Otherwise, you know, sometimes once a year I just have to, like, open up all my drawers and uh, refresh my memory what it is I do have. I should probably do that. Take inventory. That's exactly. smart. <laughs> Definitely. Just so you remember what you have and what, you know, tools you have at your disposal. But um, I think I should probably put that on my to-do list for this week before I go to ISIS. So yeah. I... Uh, Definitely unless, before you go to ISIS. <laughs> yeah, because you can buy everything. <laughs> tempted to uh, pick up more things that I probably already have and just haven't looked at me. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that actually does lead into another question again. Um, someone said, what is the one cake tool that you can never work without? Oh, my generic answer to that question always used to be my hands because they're, you know, the most indispensable um, tool. Uh, these days I'd say, it's not that I can't work without it, I just don't really like to, um, the, the KitchenAid the pasta roller, um, mm -hmm. just because of the consistency. Um, and I think that is a lot of times what kind of visually sets apart um, some cakes is the thinner and more consistent you can get your embellishments, bows, that kind of a thing, um, the more professional it looks. And so um, short of having a real sheeter, which I just keep trying to convince myself it's time, um, <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say that. And then as far as like gum paste tools, I really only have one that I use a lot, and that's the Dresden tool. That's, James calls it Marina School because that's the only thing I really ever grab. <laughs> awesome. I, the Dresden tool is great. Yep. <laughs> All right, we have one more question that we can take. Um, let's see. Uh, is there a trick to get the fondant out of the mold without stretching it? Um, yeah, definitely. If you're working with gum paste, um, it usually pops out really without a problem. Um, if it's something that's a little bit more intricate or you're using fondant or if it might be a little bit warm, say um, I just pop my molds in the freezer for just a couple of minutes, just long enough to firm them up and then, um, and then they pop out quite easily. Um, anything that's kind of intricate or long, um, I would pop out uh, by flipping it over and have the, the base of it on the table and kind of lifting the mold away from it as opposed to trying to dig the mold out of it, if that makes sense. Perfect. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've sat and watched Dominic, um, the, these marvelous molds, Dominic, uh -huh. um, he... Um, has, you know, displayed some, you know, and, and demoed some of his molds, and he'll just take them and stretch them a little bit here and there. I mean, I don't know if all molds do that, but I've seen him do that with, with these molds, that you can just kind of stretch them a little bit, and it yeah. should just, you know, loosen up and pop out. But the, but the idea of, of sticking in the freezer for, for a few seconds, or for a few minutes, is that's a really good thing to do. So, yeah, yeah the, the, the stretching does help, too because it just kind of loosens things. And especially with his new um, online molds, that's a, uh, a, a definite tip that works. Awesome. And then after that, I'm teaching at the French Pastry School uh, in Chicago. That's uh, toward, I think it's the week before Thanksgiving. 
Um, and then in December, James and I are going to be returning to Australia once again um, to teach there for a couple of weeks. So really the next ah. couple of months after ISIS is going to be a little bit of a little bit of downtime. Um, but I'm looking forward to being able to work on some projects that we've had on the back burner for for quite some time. Um, and both James and I are severely limiting our um, hands-on class schedule for 2014. Um, we have kind of had some projects in the works that we just haven't had time to focus on. And mm -hmm. so we are taking ourselves off the road for 2014 and going to focus on um, some different projects that we've oh, had wow. going on. So. Okay, so if you guys want some classes from Marina, <laughs> hurry and get them in. <laughs> we, will be, we will be hosting, actually, uh, classes together in the San Francisco oh, Bay Area in February. Um, we just we just need to stick a little closer to home for a while. So yeah. um, I'll be posting information about those um, relatively soon. But it'll be uh, I believe four days of two or three different classes um, with uh, both James and I together, and independently that will be up in Burling Game, which is really close to the San Francisco airport. Um, I did the same thing in February of last year, and it worked out really really great. So awesome. I'm excited about that. Sounds like fun. Sounds yeah. like fun. Okay, this is going to be an amazing class. Marina is just, you know, genius, and so this is going to be a great class. So, and and as always, Crassy, you know, you if you have any questions for Marina throughout everything, you can actually, you know, go on and ask questions and things like that. And, and uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I mean, Crassy was was really the first company to come out and and do these online classes and, and do them well. Um, mm -hmm. There are certainly quite a few different sites now that um, that are offering online classes, which is awesome too. Um, the thing that I think that really sets Craftsy apart, besides the production value, is the fact that, you know, as our initial agreement as an instructor with Craftsy is that we do stay involved um, with our courses. And so mm -hmm. daily, um, two or three times a day, I check my questions and answer them. So it, it, it really is direct access to the instructors. There's not anybody else answering the questions for us. It's it's really us. So that's great. That's I mean, that correct. right there is worth the is worth the class. <laughs> yeah, you know? you know, there's always a little bit of debate about is it too expensive, too inexpensive, and you know anybody who has paid to go to a hands-on class knows mm -hmm. how you know really inexpensive it is and what a great value it is. It really you can do is. Do it from the comfort of your own home at your own time and. Um, you know, you have the class forever, which kind of means you have us forever <laughs> exactly. answering, answering <laughs> questions. Um, so while it's certainly nice to have the questions limited to the class material, there is certainly lots of questions that are unrelated. So <laughs> we, you can pretty much get anything answered um, awesome. <laughs> to a point. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, that little <laughs> to a point. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for Marina for coming and joining us. Um, you, you know, you're very extremely talented, and I know there are so many people out there that just love you for for you personally and for your work and just everything that you are. So oh, thank you very much. Thank you for, for thank you for joining us. Chat. All right, and thank you guys for listening. You guys are awesome. You guys are, you know. We couldn't do it without you, so. <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. Okay, well, um, I guess we'll just yeah, see you guys all next week, hopefully. And, uh, That's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Everybody have a great day. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.